The Sentinel is known to be reliable, fearless, disciplined, consistent, courageous, motivated, and skillful. So do what you feel passionate about. Take chances. All these qualities start from the mind. Your mind can be your worst enemy or your most powerful weapon. The world becomes your library to help you become better at your craft. Is this the dagger? Learn how to achieve greatness and tap into the Sentinel Mindset. This class today, they are going to be graduating just like the last one you did for me. They're graduating in April as well. Uh, very engaged class, very much looking forward to uh, graduating and getting out into the law enforcement field. So having you guys here today is, is just awesome that we can get uh, a different avenue, which is that of security and, um, and security and protection that you guys provide, your company provides um, for the class. This is Sentinel uh, Security Company. And um, not only are these guys going to do a presentation, they'll give you an introduction of what it is they do um, and uh, their hiring practices, who they're hiring. You can also go on their website and take a look at it. Their website is quite extensive and shows the different uh, areas of security that, uh, that they, they do. And um, they really pose as an advancement for those of you who may need some experience in the security profession and want to go on to being police officers, but I'll let them talk to that. They also do a podcast and the part of that podcast is, is today they're gonna record this. Um, I told them that you are a very engaged group uh, we would really appreciate that uh, connection between you guys and um, these presenters. Make sure you have your cameras on. Make sure you ask them all the questions that you need to uh, maybe move forward in, in this type of a career situation. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to them and they can, uh, they can do their own introduction and uh, you can have a look at their presentation. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you, Kathy. Hello, everybody. How are y'all doing? My name is Constantine Yuanu. I am the uh, CEO of Sentinel Security. And to my right here, we have Michael Reventar, who is our COO. Hey, guys. How you doing? So we really want to thank you for this opportunity. Uh, we've already done this with the first class. And we're doing another one tomorrow as well. But the purpose of today is to what Kathy stated, and that is to help you get your mindset ready to uh, potential opportunities that are gonna start coming to you um, or opportunities that you're gonna have to go after, okay? So um, before we tell you about who Sentinel is and what we're about, as Kathy said, we do uh, do a lot of uh, media through our agency and we do podcasts and um, our podcast is in the form of audio and video as well. So if you wanted to search a podcast, it would be on the Sentinel Mindset. Uh, that's all our, on our Instagram handles uh, or Sentinel Security, or it would be um, on our YouTube channel. And the purpose of what we, why we do all this is to kind of help prepare people to get to their goals. Now, uh, it's, it's something that we do with all our people within our organization. Anyone that joins our organization, we like to find out what their goals are. Um, and the reason why is because probably the number one reason why people apply to us as an organization is because of our reputation with the police agencies. We have been recognized as pushing out solid individuals that are landing careers in the police anywhere from a month and a half to two months is when we lose someone. And we know this. We know when someone comes on board that their aspirations may be beyond what they're looking for in just security. We know that a lot of people look at security as just as a stepping stone. And by the way, even though you're going to hear us reference substantial today about policing and all, uh, really, um, you know, we've had people get onto corrections, the CBSA, uh, kind of anything that law enforcement would, can, can, can take you in, close protection, whatever that sort is. And we like to kind of facilitate ourselves as a, as a development agency that can just really help you get to your goals. So before we actually get to find out who Sentinel is and what the company is all about. I want to share a story with you. About 25 years ago, I was a student at Seneca College King Campus, and I was in the program 
entitled Law Enforcement. And towards the end of that program, uh, there was a, a stat that was pushed out amongst the professors, and it was trying to prepare us for the workforce. And the stat was that 6% of law enforcement students will be able to successfully get a career in policing. And I can tell you that 25 years later, that stat has changed and it's actually lower, which means that uh, it doesn't matter how well you do in school. I mean, that's very important. It's just a small piece of the pie. Really what matters is everything else that you do before you get to your uh, interview stage or background stage with a law enforcement entity. And we're gonna reference policing, for example, here. When you apply to a police force and they're doing your background check, what they're trying to determine and understand is what kind of experience do you have that's going to reflect within their organization? And again, the schooling thing is just one piece of the pie, which means that in order for you to stand out from the competition, you have to demonstrate and articulate why you are better than the other person. I mean, it's a question that we ask within the organization, what sets you apart from the rest? It's, a, it's not our original question. This is a question that every industry asks. Why should we hire you? What makes you so different from the others? Now, you put that in a very highly competitive market like policing, your chances get even thinner. And if we equate it to like sports, if you look at people that are looking at getting into professional sports, like the NBA, uh, you know, for someone to say, I want to be an NBA player, you may look at that and someone may laugh or someone will be like, oh, it's amazing. You just put a real life goal for yourself. What are you going to do to get there? And today we want to kind of get this mentality out where if it's like, if your goal is to get into policing or something in law enforcement, it can't just be you saying it. You have to show the work. And if you're not challenging yourself and if you're not putting yourself in a place mentally to get to your goal, you're not going to succeed. Like, I mean, I just want to kind of like, like push out any of the form fuzzy feelings of like, you know, what you want to hear. It's a tough market out there. And it's not just in the realms of law enforcement. I mean, I know somebody right now that just passed their bar. He wants to be a lawyer. He's having an extremely hard time trying to get a law firm so he can do his apprentice apprenticeship with why because of the competition. So what we've done is we've designed an entire uh, program um, within our organization that helps people get closer to their goals, particularly in policing. We've modeled our entire agency uh, from the minute you walk in to get an interview, to your training, to deployment, to being with a training officer, to the work that you'll be doing on the front lines. It's all designed for people that want to get uh, into that role of policing. So if you are looking at kind of just opening up the door and saying, I want this as a career, we're going to give you all the straight goods right now to help you get closer to your goal. But the one thing I have to challenge you right now is this, your mind is going to be your, your, your biggest ally, or it's going to be your enemy. And it's literally the difference of setting your alarm clock at six in the morning and your body tells you sleep in. Guess what just happened? You just got your first defeat of the day. And you want to try to always have wins. And there's nothing better than having wins first thing in the morning. So what I like to tell people is set yourself up to get closer to your goals, but it has to start with your mind, which is why we have this whole program called the Sentinel Mindset, because the attributes of a soldier, which is what a Sentinel is, is kind of things that if you tie into you're going to create an incredible recipe of success. And, you know, you hear people that win the lottery all the time, all the time. Imagine somebody told you right now, I have the winning numbers for this Friday for the Lotto Max, and someone shared them with you. And all you had to do was just be engaged in play. Your chances would be you'd win. And that's how we want to share this information with you today. This information is information that has been around for a long time, but it's also information that we made our own as well in what we do. I can probably tell you very confidently, if we look at Canada, our country right now, and how security is demonstrated and perceived, it doesn't have a great reputation, okay? Um, I'm talking about more for private security entities, more private security companies that are working and kind of being part of this. It's, it's a systematic problem. Well, we looked at security in the organization and said, what can we do to revolutionize the way security is, is viewed? How can we do it where it can actually turn into a career for someone that actually wants to? A lot of security jobs are not paying 
higher than minimum wage. And I've always had a big problem with that. And if you do any research about who I am and who the company is and the thinking that we have in the organization, we have a problem with this type of job being minimized where minimum wage is tied to it, which is why we have rates that start at $20 an hour, which is why we do have a lot of incentives within the organization. So I say that out to you because we truly have something special with this in the organization. We lose people to the police force on a regular basis. We are proud to lose people to the police agencies. We're going to get on very shortly about our relationship with the police, but I want you to prepare yourself in this next 45 minutes to open up your mind, hear what we have to say, and understand that we're coming from a place that has gone through the process, that has gone through all the elements. And again, we're giving you those secret numbers right now to help you get to those goals. Should you be a fit for the organization? And again, we look at mindset as the biggest qualifier. What are we looking for an individual? Why should we hire you above someone else? We're literally going through your mind. And we're doing a lot of things that are very unconventional that you don't get at classic interviews. We're trying to find out who you are and if you can represent the entity. So I'm going to let Mike right now just jump in. He's going to tell you a little bit about who Sentinel is. But before we do that, I want to just say one more thing. At the end of this presentation, we will open this up for questions. I want you, if you have any questions, don't be shy. This is the best time to ask because your question can literally be the defining question that might push you to the next level. Mike, go ahead, bro. Okay. Hey guys, I just want to welcome you today. I want to first congratulate you for getting up to this point of almost completing your studies. And as we said, kind of in an earlier class, <clears throat> now, now the work's going to start. You guys have been preparing. You're kind of in, you know, not just the starting block or, at, you know, at home plate. You guys are rounding third base. You're almost there. I, I want to implore you. Now is the time to really, really align. What do you need to do in order to get to your next goal? Okay. Um, some people, you know, life just happens to them. They abide and they prescribe to the thinking of que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. We've seen kind of from our experience that there's something in life that you cannot control, but the things that you can control are your mentality, your attitude toward the work, and how you embrace the experiences. It's not what happens to you, it's how you respond to them. So even like right now, we're in this, you know, we say this often in our circle, where you are, be all there. And I just say, if, as uh, Kathy was saying, that you guys are a very engaging class, that means that you're present. There's nothing better to be, a, a, you know, you know in, in terms of being able to be good in your own life than to be present. If you're present, you will make the most of every opportunity and you, you will have a really good chance to go on to policing. Mm -hmm. Now for us as a company, one of the reasons why we're, we even both, Constantine and myself, are in security was because we realized how delinquent the industry was. We had worked in it, we'd worked the night scene, we've worked in different facets of security. And it seemed like there was such a low bar. There was zero expectation. Um, it didn't matter if people got the job done or not. And what we kind of pride ourselves is, is we had this inner core of people that actually really cared about the work. We took great pride in it. And at the core, I'd say the one common thread is we were all born protectors. It was our nature to protect. While we started to get better at working together as a team, we started to carve a niche in the industry. So where we're at right now, about 10 years later, is I can confidently say that we, we are considered a premium boutique security company that looks after clients such as Netflix and Amazon um, and a lot, of the, a lot of the other studios. In terms of corporate brands, we look after Cineplex, Globe and Mail. Um, in terms of hotels, we have both the majority of the five-star hotels like Shangri-La, Hazleton Hotel, um, they, they are kind of our client base. Um, we, for the most part, are known to be, I guess, the creme de la creme. You know, there's kind of, if we compare it to a vehicle, then it's good just to know who your audience are. We, we get an idea of where you guys are at, to know with us, we're not just a base model of a vehicle. We're not just a car that you just go from A to B. We are the experience. You know, it's not about being a luxury vehicle. We're all about performance, and we're all about, within that performance, you're just wowed. Our clients... If they're not wowed by our service, we failed, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They, that's our goal. Our goal is for our clients to constantly think, who are you guys? Like, this is incredible. And the attention to detail and the way that you guys anticipated this and the way that you guys de-escalated that, that, that's how our clients speak on the regular with us. And they value us as we value them. Why that matters is for people, we are always looking for people that have that same passion, that they truly have a passion to serve, Okay. To do policing, what do you do? You serve, right? And you protect, right? And 
serving, I'll, I'll break that down just really quickly. Sentinel is a place where if you love to serve, you're going to shine here. And the reason why is because we, we believe there's something really noble about it. There's a nobility to serve. Anyone can sit at a table and be served something. But to actually make yourself less, to have a better experience for someone else, that's something that's very commendable. You know, I've had conversations with clients. I've had conversations with people on the floor, managers of venues. And guess what, guys? They didn't respect security, okay? And like, look, um, we're, we're going to speak to that. We found a really cool way in our, in our own little world to make security something they can really be proud of. But we understand the stigma. You know, we, we have these cultural references of mall cops and, and kind of these pretenders and people who just like take their job too seriously. Uh, we can confidently tell you that if you take security seriously, there's a chance, a really good chance that you might have a chance to do that in policing, yeah. right? Because you can be considered a professional. So what I want to say just right now about Sentinel is we're, we're definitely a, a premium security company and we're looking for the best. We undoubtedly are trying to find the best of the best. And the reason why we do that is because we know that if you have some time with us, whether it's three months to three years, we're a better company because we have people like yourself who are professionally minded, who have a professional goal. The fact that you guys can say quickly, I want to be in policing. I want to serve the community and I want to be... Uh, someone who brings change and, and affects change, that's someone that we kind of want in our circle. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe you want to share some stuff on that. Yeah, so uh, for us to be able to get anyone to come in and represent the organization, we're looking for a very specific mindset, okay? Um, we want someone, like, look, we, we, we put people through an experience. If you come here and you're selected for an interview, you're going to start this experience that we're talking about, which we're not going to give you the, 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 the tidbits right now because we want to kind of throw you out of your game. But we're trying to throw you out of your game. We're trying to strip away all the layers to find out who are you as an individual that's going to represent our brand. As Mike said, we service top level brands. We are probably one of the most expensive company in Canada. Okay. And that is because of what we provide. Think of the iPhone, guys. I'm not sure how many people have an iPhone. I used to be a big BlackBerry user, but anyways, that's another story. Rest in peace. Yeah, rest in okay. peace. Now we're all iPhone users here. Now, I'll tell you this about the iPhone. If you're an iPhone user, as the example for this purpose here, they all have Siri. Now, imagine that you had a phone that, did, that had an iPhone that didn't have Siri as one of the options. This is how our clients look at our people, that every single person coming in is going to be acting and performing a certain way. And the minute that other person comes in and does not hit that caliber mark that another individual did before them, there's an issue with that. And that doesn't really happen in general security. General security, there is no expectation. There is no standard for the most part. It's kind of all tossed out the window. So we've been able to really hone in on that. So anyone that comes into the organization, we're trying to find that something, that little something special about you that we can work with. So we want to see your personality and what you can do. Because at the end of the day, what we see, we're looking at you through the eyes of our clients. And our clients need to be able to have that exact same feeling. So I say that to you because... Um, we're looking for individuals that can possess humility, that have a teachable spirit that we can pour into you. We're looking for individuals that can demonstrate good work ethic. We're, we're looking for individuals that are basically hitting the marks. Now, we give a lot of our trade secrets on our website. If you go on our website under our police development program tab, we talk a lot about what you can do to help you get to your goals. But the, the key here is, is that you need to be able to demonstrate that. And again, when I mentioned that stat about 6%, you're coming into a market that is overly saturated with competition, okay? And let's look at sports, for example, as an analogy here. If you look at a coach, his objective for the Raptors or for the Leafs is to get a win. That's the objective. They need to get a win. And we look at that same setup within our organization. The people that represent us, we're only going to put the best people through that represent us. We do not have a union in this organization. We don't buy into the union stuff because to us, we're performance driven, which means that someone can come into the organization and be a shining star and basically take the place of someone that has been here for a couple of years that is starting to get stagnant, that's not taking the work seriously. For us, this competitive spirit lives hard within the organization. Those that excel, those that grow, 
are those that want it the most because that is life, ladies and gentlemen. That is life. If you want a job in policing, you have to demonstrate and articulate why you are better than the 5,000 other applicants coming into the mix. Okay, yeah. so, th so if someone says that they want it, okay, I want it. Yes. Right? I want to be a cop. You guys probably would all say that, have a chance to speak to that if you had a chance when you're asked it. What, what, is the, what are you looking for in their actions? So, How do you know someone wants it? Yeah, because, so, they say, because they tell you it? 100%. So by just claiming something, like saying, I want to be a millionaire is not good enough. You have to articulate why. You have to, you have to sell yourself. You got to sell why you are an individual. And I mean, you may have zero security experience. I mean, a lot of you guys are graduating in April. You may or may have a security job. Most probably don't. Maybe your experience right now is extremely limited. Even if you don't have that, you can demonstrate through personality. You can demonstrate through things that maybe you've done in your, in your life up to this point. Maybe you've been a really, really good brother, a really good sister. Maybe you've been able to help grandma, out, whatever. You need to articulate that because at the end of the day, what we're trying to find out is why you should have a place within this organization. Because the people that do come inside here and are successful and do have goals to get to their goals, which are like into policing, are usually going to hit those goals off because they're just trying to get there and show everything they got and we're developing them on the way to do that. So that gives you a little idea of how we look at people coming to the organization. Everything from the minute you apply, we give you instructions, simple instructions. We want to see, are you listening? Are you, are you wa watching the links that we're sending you? Um, at the end of the day, you want to always put yourself in the best position forward. I'll give you an example right now. I, I brought this up with the last class as well. In theory right now, everybody should have their camera on right? Because what we're trying to do is see who you are as an individual, right? You may be looking at this today as just information. You may be looking at this today as in uh, a waste of time. You, you may have different views. At the end of the day, what we can tell you is, is that if you know who we are as a company and you've researched who we are as a company, you can understand that the value and the importance of why we're telling you right now is we're trying to help you get closer to your goal. So the company right now looks at three divisions. We have our corporate events division, which is what we're known for. So Mike referenced some of our clients, everything from the Royal Ontario Museum, Cineplex, Globe and Mail, the UFC. These are all event related clients. So that's one big portion of our clients. The second portion of our clients is healthcare. It's a brand new division. We jumped into the market. We were able to be successful in coming into this industry because of the caliber of individual that we had. We put a tremendous amount of training into our people to get us ready for that. And that's our second division. Our third division is the close protection division, which is another word for saying bodyguard as the, the more lax term. And that is a whole different division. That division is a very specialty division. And the only way you can get in that division is by being selected by the director of close protection. So for the purposes of today, those are the three divisions that we have. And in those three divisions, what we're currently actively hiring for is called a hybrid role. And that hybrid role means you're going to get exposure in a healthcare environment, and you're going to get exposure in an event environment. And it's important to note that you will be getting that on a weekly basis. One day you can be at a hospital. One day you could be at the Budweiser stage doing a concert. One day you could be doing a wedding. One day you could be on the set of Star Trek. These are things to give you an example of how uh, we work with the organization. Because the key here is this. We've designed our entire operational setup for those wanting a career in policing. And what you will find out if you have or have not gone to the back home stage of a police um, uh, program or sorry, or police uh, employment setup is that they will want to find out why they should hire you. And you got to demonstrate to them your experience. Now, if you have experience working, let's just say in a condo or working in a place where you do not interact with people, that is not the experience that the police are looking for. They want to be able to see, can you diffuse situations? Can you communicate with the public? Can you demonstrate and show empathy? These are things that they're going to want to see, and they're going to want to see that by your examples. And if you can't come up with proper examples, you're kind of wasting your time in the role that you're doing right now. Remember, the goal here is, is that you want to do a job that's going to give you the exposure, the experience to challenge you, because the only challenge can we grow. You want to get that and apply that through uh, through what we do, for example, or any other entity that can challenge you where you're dealing with people so you can demonstrate that to the police, okay? Um, that is an example of why we've designed the setup here so you have exposure both in healthcare settings and event settings. In healthcare settings, you're going to deal with emotional people. You're going to deal with suicides. You're going to deal with tragedy. There's nothing really positive that comes out of a hospital outside of childbirth, 
Okay. And even then things can go wrong. So you're always dealing with that volatile sense of emotion. On the other side of the coin, you're dealing with the event division, the event division, you're dealing with entitled people. Do you know who I am? Give me access to this. You're dealing with people that have had alcohol, people that have lost the inability to, <laughs> to be proper. So you're dealing with these situations and police love to know how you dealt with those circumstances. So the reason why I'm saying that is because those are the two industries that we basically have a handle in right now. And we've created this hybrid role that gives people the exposure. We have five platoons in the company, A, B, C, D, and E. A to D are all full-time platoons, and they specifically get the majority of their exposure in healthcare. But platoon E is where the hybrid role comes in. That's where you come in. Platoon E is basically where you're hired to be hybrid and you're working the both set of environments. A lot of people love that because they're not just in one set environment over and over and over and over again. They're continuously being challenged. So that gives you an idea how that looks. So for uniforms, if you're in healthcare, you're wearing a tactical uniform, very similar to what a police officer looks like. In fact, we actually modeled because it was a brand new division for us. Everything that we did before was in suits and everyone does provide their own suit black suit. That's what the image was for the organization with red ties and obviously uh, radios and all that we supply. But in healthcare, you can't have a suit. So we basically chose to have a tactical uniform and we designed it very similar to what the police look like because image for our organization with branding is extremely high. Now, if you want to take a look at what this looks like, visit our website. It does have a healthcare um, uh, tab. There's also an events tab. You can clearly get an idea of what our people look like in uniforms, but those are giving you an idea of what the two uniforms are. From an availability perspective, if you are finished school, that means you're wide open and we're looking for people that are wide open when it comes to the availability. However, if you did have other commitments, if you did have another job, the minimum core criteria for availability for us would be Thursday to a Sunday. Why, is, why does open availability matter? Uh, open availability matters because it shows us that your flexibility is wide open and we can schedule you anywhere. And anywhere means that it could be in a healthcare or event environment. It means you can probably get the most amount of your hours between 30 and 40 hours a week. Some people get more. It just gives you more exposure to where you can be placed. When you limit your availability, you also limit where you get your exposure from. Now, is that in line with what policing expectations are? It is completely in line with police expectations. Again, we said that we modeled everything to the police. So if somebody comes in and says, I can't work weekends, I can't work nights, I can't work holidays, I'm not going to come because of a snowstorm, all these things, you're in the wrong industry, guys. I'm going to tell you a little story. Constantine said this before. We had a lady that came in here for an interview, and she looked him in the eyes because he is the CEO of the company, and he conducts all the interviews face-to-face -to, -face to get an idea. Are you really about what we want to bring to our clients? And this lady, young lady said, I want to be a, a police officer right away. Just, just know this and, and bank this. When you say that in our circle, that means the bar of expectation raises incredibly high. You're telling us you're on the road to being a professional. We'll unbox that a little bit later. Secondly, before he could ask the second question, the lady volunteered. Oh, and I don't just want to be a police officer. I want to be the chief of police. Okay. So Constantine said, okay, great. And now you can imagine like, okay, who knows this, this lady, you know, 15, 20 years down the road could be a chief of police on our podcast. We've had chief of, uh, uh, we had, you know, specifically chief uh, Stephen J. Tanner, who was chief of police for uh, Halton. He was the last one that's on here. We, we have an idea of the caliber that, that is needed by just spending a good amount of time with them, seeing their mentality with this lady later on said in her interview that she doesn't work weekends. She will not work overnights. And she would prefer to not work evenings in the weekdays if possible. So, yeah. so that is an example of where we just have to close the file. It, it makes no sense anymore. And is she, she going to be chief of police with that mentality? No, too? never, never. And she probably will, unless she changes her mentality, will probably struggle immensely to get into her goal of policing, which is why it's so critical, guys, that when you say and you throw out a goal, when your mind articulates and pushes out the words, I want to do this, I want to be that. I want to lose extra amount of pounds. I want to earn a million dollars. When you say and you throw out these goals, if you don't have the work behind it, you're not going to get to them. So the key here is, is that you want to push and push and push to get closer to your goal. And again, I said this earlier, unless you're going uphill and you're challenging yourself and making things difficult for yourself, you will have a hard time succeeding. Because if anything is done when it's easy, I mean, the results will also be easy as well. And think of just working out. If you go to the gym, if you half-ass the workouts, you're not going to see the results. That's the truth. 
But if you do the, go to the gym and you have a proper diet and you do well, you will exceed your expectations and your goals. And maybe have a chance to be a cop. I mean, I think it's key. Remember what Constantine said, 6%, it's actually less than now. Six, it's between 3 to 6% of people who are in your position taking the courses you're taking will become police officers. Yeah. If you relate that to other industries, imagine that you say that to those studying to be a lawyer, a doctor, those going into any type of industry. That is not a high success rate. No. Okay. So what you want to do to separate yourself right now is be professionally minded. It's not just your experience that will impress police that will get you in the door with us. It's about your mentality, your mentality to the work. Are you adverse to hard work or do you say, bring it on? Are you a team player and someone who enjoys being in a team environment? And within that team, you have coaching and supervision and accountability. Or are you someone who's like never wrong and you point fingers at the back of heads of your peers and you tell everyone about what they did wrong, but never look at your, in the mirror for yourself. These are the things I want to tell you, if you can get past these little things, we know, we know some people who are senior in what they do. They've had, you know, careers for 20, 30 years, and they still trip on their ego. They have an ego and they trip. They have never conquered that. That's right. right. Okay. And some of them have been even cops for 20, 30 years, and they trip on these little things. And I just tell you, if you can get and be, and, and be the best person that you can be, you know, someone who is truly secure, truly knows who you are and why you're getting into this profession, that is probably one of the number one things that will make a mark and an impression when you're asked by that recruiter. We had on our podcast about two weeks ago, his name is Jared Singh. He's with Durham Regional Police. If you look him up, he's known as the, the dancing cop. And uh, out in Oshawa, years ago, he got a call to respond to a, uh, a brawl, a beatdown. There was 10 people in an alley beating someone down on the ground. When he responded in his cruiser, he came and he found a bunch of people break dancing and dancing for a music video. Okay, it wasn't a beatdown. It, this is what the person who called 911 thought it was. He, you know, he realized, okay, it's all good. And he ended up dancing with them and just kind of having some fun with them. They videotaped it. It went viral. Why bring it up? He's kind of a very cutting edge police officer, someone who knows why he's in policing. He told us why he got the job is because of the confidence that he was able to articulate why he wanted to be a cop. Okay. He knew who he was. He knew his own personal family experience where police, because of some domestic problems, police were in his home as a child. And police came and made that situation better. And he said to us here at this podcast table, he said to us, those police made me feel safe and kind of safe for the first time. And he made that choice. I also want to be a police officer to make other people feel safe. Why I'm telling you that, guys, that is this guy, it, it, you know, he had a life experience that primed him and got him ready. And he responded in a way that would make him an amazing asset to any police agency. They recognized that and said, you understand what this job is about. And he was on the road to becoming a cop. No. And, and that, that to me is, is something that is an, an incredible testimony to like who he is and what he does for the organization. For us guys, the one thing I got to say to you is that um, we have earned the trust of many police agencies because they know the caliber of individual that comes from this organization. Uh, we've officially partnered with Peel Regional Police as an example, where their recruiters come here to our office and we set it up where they get to meet our people so they can have the opportunity to get closer to their police goals. Now, I wanna make sure I, I kind of repeat that and clear that up right now. As an organization, our one mandate is that if you come in and you tell us what your goal is and it's not within security, because some people might come in and say, I wanna grow and be a security supervisor. I wanna be in the realms of private security. That happens, but the vast majority of people that come in here say they wanna be police officers. And for them to come in and tell us that, what we're gonna do right now is put you through our development setup program. And that's gonna include the training that everybody will receive. You're gonna get extensive training, followed by scenario-based training, followed by working under a tactical uh, training officer, followed by working with large teams, and we're going to document your journey with us and feed you the knowledge that you need through our content that we push out on a regular basis so you can get closer to your goal. And guess what? Agencies like Peel are 100% acknowledging this. Do you know how amazing it is as an organization 
to hear from people that apply to us that the way they found out about us was because the recruiter from the agency, the police agency that they're working for, recommended they come and get their experience with us. Like that's an incredible shout out to us. Yeah, that that to, happens often. It happens often. But I say that because they understand the caliber. They understand the thinking. And um, I, I mentioned this to the other class. I emailed uh, the links to Kathy as well as the flyer. Uh, we are doing a big setup for specifically right now. I mean, we do a lot of them, but in this specific one that we're doing next week, uh, we, alongside Peel Regional Police, uh, are putting together a, a, uh, a, one to a 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. session called Women in Policing. So if there's any women that are listening to this right now that would like to be part of this, I want you to understand what this is. This is not a session where you just come to hear about women in policing. This is a session where you have active recruiters that are coming here to see what we have so they can select and invite them back in so they can get an interview and go through the whole process. And I'll let you guys know what that is. It's actually, it's a, it's a, it was a podcast, but we've turned it into, it's basically a special event, kind of like a fireside chat. We have uh, our, our offices, which are at VP and 401. We've taken over the old universal building. Within it, we have a 80 seat uh, state of the art theater. In the theater, we will have uh, four police that are with Peel and it's four Peel's uh, kind of uh, find us women police officers, and they're going to share their personal stories of why they're police and what it was like and what they're looking for. Um, so we've extended that. The reason it wasn't actually just a small internal uh, meetup, essentially, that was going to just be for Sentinels that are part of our uh, company, but we've decided to open up to other security companies and even open up some seats uh, to it, the student body like yourselves. Um, we, you guys will get the information from Kathy. It is uh, January 20, sorry, February 24th from 1 to 3 p.m., um, you will have to, in order to get a seat because it's limited seating, you will have to, in a video, let us know why you want to be a police officer. And from there, we have a team that screens it because it is selected seating. And we're trying to find the, the best people who have the best heart and mind towards the work. They will be, uh, I guess, uh, given uh, permission and invited to that day. Um, and it's, it's going to be a pretty amazing event. Yeah, and we do this regularly. So this, this one, even though it's geared to women for next week, we put more and more of these on. So uh, there are always, always going to be these future opportunities. But again, for us, in order for anyone to get a seat in the organization, we truly want to see that you're bringing something special and your mindset is showcasing that. It's very easy, guys. I mean, I can say it's very easy for me to see if someone takes this kind of work seriously or their goal seriously. It's very easy. Just like it's very easy to see LeBron James or Stephen Curry basketball pros do their thing, and it's easy for them. The practice that they put into place over time has gotten them there. For us, we deal with people all the time. We probably get about 12 to 14,000 resumes a month from our organization. We have actually police agencies that field us um, uh, people that didn't get through their process so we can develop them and get them properly assessed and properly ready for their goals. Again, this is something that we do for free, okay? Developing our people is key but you're also getting paid to get developed. And if you can bring a good attitude, I'm telling you, your goals will come to you and you'll be like, wow, I can't believe this happened. You just need to have that open mind. Guys, life is hard. You're going to find out very shortly when you get out into the workforce. Life is hard. You want to make that dollar. You want to be able to have success. You want to be happy with your decisions. You got to put that work in. So this is kind of like how, the, how we think, how we're talking all the time. Sometimes people will say, are we in a security company here? Because it doesn't sound like, it sounds like we're like in TED Talks every single day. This is how we have our engagement with our people because we're truly trying to get them there. That is the difference. Now, somebody asked in another class, and the, another question, what makes you guys different from the other companies? Really, it all comes down to mindset. That's what it comes down to. The mindset, it comes down to established reputation, and relationships. These are all things that you can see that are demonstrated on our website. And by the way, it's just not good enough for me to tell you, look at our website, because we could have had someone write something incredible and put some beautiful pictures on our website. Our testimony is what you will see in our social media, which is what we're pushing out on a regular basis, on a weekly basis. If you go on Instagram and you look at at Sentinel Security, you'll get an understanding of what I'm talking about. You'll get an idea of what our people are being put through testing-wise. You'll get an idea of what their presentation is. You'll get an understanding about the relationships that we have with police agencies and government agencies. Like literally, when we get those calls, we're getting them because they want that high caliber individual, right? So I say that because the biggest thing you get from Sentinel is exposure, okay? And the way I can, again, bring back the sporting example, if you 
are going to potentially get selected to get into a pro team, you have scouters from across the world coming to high school games, coming to colleges to see what that talent is. And if they find that there's talent, raw talent, they scout that person and they make them an offer to give them, you know, um, scholarships and all that. We look at things the exact same way when we're bringing people on board because we know that we're going to get the eyes of police recruiters here. And we don't want them to come back and say, yeah, we just came into Sentinel out of their 175 personnel. We didn't have anyone that was even remotely close. I want to throw this in. So now what, what is the scout looking for? What is a police police recruiter? I'm going to tell you exact. We've, we were speaking with a recruiter with an agency a couple of weeks ago, and he told us that when, when, our pe- when people are doing their physical, he's watching how they are. He's watching, are they putting all their effort? Secondly, he's watching how are they are with all the other participants, the possible recruits? Are they encouraging others? Are they, do they have an ego? And are they, you know, are they just joking around? Are they not taking it seriously? For us too, on the job, this is, it's interesting. We, we, Constantine had a call asking specifically about one of, one of our sentinels. Is he ready to be police? Uh, we had to disclose that on his last shift, he got written up for a And secondly, for that he was in front of the client and on the floor. Okay. And those two things alone, I can say, you know, we can say this because it's confidential still that that was enough for the recruiter to say that he's, you know, thank you for that. And we found out that that gentleman's not going to be going on to policing right now. Right. right. And again, is that us making that happen? No, we are just basically the the mouthpiece for the performance that you guys lay down okay and if someone thinks in a professional environment that they can that is not a professional so i say that to you right now look in the mirror what are you about make those decisions build in the best habits you can make those tough choices that you're going to do the things that are going to set you up to have the greatest chance to be actually chosen to be a police officer Mm -hmm. and guess what if you're not one of those three to six percent the, the best thing about it is you're in game shape. You're going to be a, a sound mind. You're going to be someone who takes care of your body. You're going to be someone who's in a, a state of constantly learning, who's present. And no matter what you go on to, it could be real estate. It could be, you know, the, you know, marketing, who knows what it is, finance, nursing. It's something that you're going to take the intangibles because you were a pro today and you'll be able to enjoy that. The fruit of that habit professionally you know, the tomorrow. That's right. And again, guys, just again, I want to put a disclaimer here, even though we're talking a lot about police elements, I want you to take that word police out, put nursing, take that word out, private investigations, put in whatever you want to, it all applies. The same message applies. Um, I want to give you a little example of what someone can expect if they were coming on board with us. And once we do that, I want to open up the floor to any questions that you may have. So if you are successful in the interview, and you are hired, you're going to come in and you're going to start training. Now for us, we take training very seriously. Everything from, we have a full weight room here. We have Brazilian jujitsu on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but the training that you get to get ready for the job is a, is a, is a program called stay safe, uh, put on by a gentleman named, named Steve Somerville, who was with the Toronto police for 26 years. Out of those 26 years, a good amount of them were training as one of the trainers at seal big college. He actually knows your professor quite well too, Kathy. So he's a <laughs> solid guy, Steve. He's actually listed on our website. And uh, the training is management of resistance behavior, effective communications, use of force, scenario-based training. Then deeper training would be handcuff, baton, sharp edge weapons. Once all that training is completed, then you go on the front lines. You start working with training officers. You start working with larger teams. We want to see how you think. We want to see how you work. We want to try to correct something that may need correcting or give you that excellent feedback. Once that is complete, then you're assigned basically amongst the workforce. That's how the setup hole works. And in that process, if we have understanding that your desire and your goals are to get into HR, policing, whatever that may be, we're going to work with you. We encourage you to come and communicate with us on a regular basis. We have ops managers here that are more than happy to spend time with you. You want to call them up and ask a question about what you can do something better, or you want to go over a situation, or you want to go over anything. We have those supports in place. Again, to say we're a development agency, we got to show the other end on action. And that's what we do. So that gives you an idea, guys, how we work as an organization. Um, It gives you an idea of how our thinking is. Uh, I want to say, uh, uh, before we open up the floor to some questions, one of the things that we love by a gentleman named Simon Sinek, 
He says, don't do business with people that want what you have or need what you have. Do business with people that believe what you believe. If you are someone today that wants to take your step, your, your goals to the next level, if you are someone here that wants to elevate yourself, if you are someone here that wants to challenge yourself to make things more difficult so you can grow and evolve into a better version of yourself, I highly, highly encourage you to continue to research what we do and, uh, and see if there's an opportunity to apply with us. However, if you're saying, look, at the end of the day today, I might not even be looking at any of this. Whatever you decide to do, the one question I want you to think about today and pose it to yourself and pose this with yourself every day is what, I may do, is what I'm doing right now in my future career, in my future job. If I'm doing that right now, if it's going to help me get closer to my goal, great. If it's not, ask yourself the question, why am I doing it? Okay. You can use this analogy for relationships. Is this relationship that I'm in right now healthy or is it toxic? If it's toxic, why am I in this relationship? Ask yourself these questions. They're life questions. They're not, they're not career questions. They're everything questions. Get closer to your goals. Put yourself in environments that will get you closer to your goal. Put yourself around people that will challenge you and help you grow. When I was in college, I surrounded myself around four or five people that were better than me. And I did that because I didn't want to be with people that were not motivated that we're just looking at things as just to kind of get through. I wanted people that were better than me so I can learn from them and continuously get challenged. I open up the floor to you guys if you have any questions. I thank you for your time and hopefully we can help in any other way. Okay, any questions um, that you guys have? Ponraj. Uh, hi, Constantine. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I just had a quick question regarding um, the availability. So you said like between Thursdays and Sundays, um, so let's say, because I'm actually in the Canadian Armed Forces, so I have to mandatorily end, attend like one weekend every month. So I was wondering how maybe you guys accommodate the people that are in the forces. We have many people that uh, are part of the military. Um, sadly, we just lost one, one on Tuesday to military police. I say that to you because um, we definitely work with that stuff. We're a flexible organization. We have guidelines that we work with. If your availability is sort of turning into Unfortunately, once every two months I'm available or something of that sort, that's where it would kind of uh, be ruled out. And all that happens in our meeting, right? When we get to meet one-on-one, -on -one, we get to find out what you can do. And if it makes sense for us, we move forward. And I can tell you that we do regularly accommodate people in the military. Uh, thank you. One of the things we talked about in the last class with you guys was um, um, the personal protection part of what you do and um if uh you guys wear uniform and and what that looks like could you maybe get into a little bit about um the uniform and what factions of the, your company wear uniform and um i think we were talking about how uh to get into that actual uh personal protection you really do need to have some experience they're not gonna you guys aren't just gonna hire new people and go right into that right yeah, Mike, want to answer that? Yeah, I mean, okay, starting off with, uh, with healthcare. Our healthcare teams wear full tactical. It's a police-grade uniform, um, basically made by the same supplier that supplies police. Um, handcuff baton, you have your duty belt, tactical boot. Uh, we wear a tie. We wear a tie even under the vest to present in the most professional manner. And you are required to keep your uniform impeccably clean and maintained. Um, anything like that is negligence. Negligence means that you could be negligent with the work and it gets corrected right away. Um, in terms of our uniform for events, anything corporate is a black suit, white shirt. It's a black fitted suit. So not a suit from the 90s, one that is appropriate mm -hmm. to the decade. Okay. And it's a red tie, black socks, black shoes, dress shoes. Okay. Um, any of the fancy socks that we've seen as a, a style in the style game has no bearing in our professional environment. Our clients, uh, if you got to understand, you look, we say this regularly, look like you are the bride or the groom. That's how well uh, our teams prepare to, to go on shift. If not, um, they don't remain on our team long, okay? And that's something uh, just to give an idea for there. Now for our close protection department, for close protection, um, that is, we do have a close protection department, which Constantine said earlier, is you are selected. Your body of work of proven faithful with every day you know, you're not going to be trusted with something with, on a real large scale in terms of keeping someone alive, them, their family, them and their spouse, if you cannot excel in the day-to-day -day job. Killing it on the day-to-day -day job is the precursor to possibly be selected for training. 
training, which we actually have some going on right now. Uh, we were saying earlier, we have about, is it eight? Mm -hmm. right? Eight individuals who uh, we've signed up and they're with uh, Joe Balls. If you look on our website, Joe Balls is the, he's the head of our coast protection department. He had 31 years with the RCMP and was in charge of training and the close protection department for the RCMP. So that was for the prime minister and for the royal family for 14 years. So if you get an idea, he is the one who, and we say he's tough as nails. He's someone who understands if you cannot get through his training, you have no business doing the job. And this is why I tell you guys, it might seem like this is a pretty hard message. We might tell you that, you know, on one side, we're saying we're looking for really great people and passionate but we have high, high standards. You know why? So that the quality of the security does not suffer. It's not personal. It's a professional standard that we uphold. We guard and we try to find people. And we hope people like yourselves are of the, cut of the same cloth, that you believe what we believe. Who benefits from this is our client. You benefit it because you, let, you get to be in a high performance environment where you're challenged by your peers. Your peers will challenge, the, you know, if we have a, uh, if there's something that we have to kind of endeavor, an incident, um, I'll give you an example. Uh, it was about six months ago, we had a gentleman who was suffering from mental illness and in his hospital room, he basically went in the bathroom and he took the mirror off the wall. He quietly removed the mirror off the wall. When nursing staff came to his door, they noticed him against the back wall by the radiator in the window and he had broken the mirror and had shards of the mirror in his hands. Okay, security was notified. It was our team that was first on site and they had to make a decision. Is he going to be using this glass to harm himself or to harm them? Now imagine, this is why it matters to do the job well and to be trained and prepared. So the four individuals that were outside the door had to come up with a very fast game plan. They had to go in the door. They had to neutralize the threat by gaining control of the gentleman's arms because no one hurts you with their eyes. They can only harm you with their hands or what they can grab in close quarter on their body with their hands or in their immediate area. So they got control of his hands. They were able to separate the shards of glass away from his hands and were able to get control of his knees because if you control above the knee, you control the legs and the lower torso. I say all that, two of them got cut, not badly, but they did get cut. Um, it was just minor injuries. Why that matters, that happened on the weekend. The next Tuesday, those four individuals with another three came into our office and started to train scenarios if they had to do this again. And they all took time uh, in taking turns and having a, a weapon and a team having to go and to safely de-escalate physically to take control of the individual so that they could do the job better. So that just gives you an idea. This is the way that we work. High performance means you don't try to get away and cut corners and not engage you know, you get in there, you get the job done, you make your notes on where you can make improvements and you recalibrate off that evaluation and you do it better the next time and the next. Uh, I can tell you that has proven well for us. It's that mentality that is something that is shown to police agencies that high performance, you know, standard and ability to kind of make our adjustments is why, you know, we're considered a, a top company. Mm. Awesome. And just one more thing, and then I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys to ask questions. Um, again, um, if you guys can just touch on the requirements to uh, join the company, um, I think we brought up that you need your security license and what was the other thing? The uh, Stay smart, safe. the smart, smart, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah smart serve. Yeah. Yeah. So smart you serve. would need your security license. You would need your smart serve, which gives you the ability to work in environments that have alcohol. And you would also need to have your first aid CPR, which you need to get your license to begin with. So if you're listening to this right now and you do not have your security license, you need to get your first aid CPR alongside with your license. And that in essence, will give you the ability to work. Then you get your smart serve afterwards. Uh, we can send you, Kathy, and I know I sent you some links, but I right. forgot to send you. I'll send you some links on for those that are looking at getting uh, their license. It's a 40 hour online course. It right. can cost anywhere between 100 to $200. Once you've done that course, you then got to now write a test and you can do that online. That test is about 65 bucks. Once you get that, um, and that, that's done through the Ministry of Transportation's like portals. Once you do that, it gives you your successful number, which now you can uh, send in your application, which costs another $85 and you're good, you're set. And that process takes about five, six weeks and gets you the ability to start working. So uh, if anyone has not received their license yet, you're looking at about a five to six weeks mark 
before you can actually start working. I mean, you could start applying to companies, but you might be wasting your time as well because you're usually kind of applying under the prefix that you are licensed. Okay, any, any questions? Anyone have any other questions? Um, is it possible that your company hires people directly right after police foundations or like even like an entry level position or would like you require like maybe like a year and a half of experience prior to? Okay, so right now, here's what I'm gonna explain how we look at everything. Has anybody seen the Karate Kid? The old Karate Kid, <laughs> Mr. Miyagi and, and, and Daniel. Um, Daniel's son. Daniel's son. Yes. Daniel was someone that never had karate in his life. Okay. He maybe saw a couple of videos and then Mr. Miyagi, I mean, the new version is Jackie Chan and uh, Will Smith's kid, yeah. Jaden, Jaden Will Smith. But the bottom line is to your question, all we're looking for is the ability to learn and grow. Okay. And we can do that in our sessions that we have here. And if we find that you have that little spark that we can do that, that interest, because look, we have people that come here all the time. They don't know the company. They have no idea who we are. In fact, I encourage anyone here. We have a video posted on our website called 10 ways to kill your interview. Watch it. You may not apply to us, but you can apply to anything that you do in your life. It's really good information. But at the end of the day, if you come in here, you know who we are and you say the right things and you can demonstrate that we will see through it all and give you the opportunity. But if you come in here and you're looking at just a job, the, the number one thing that people can apply for us for, whether they like it or not, is because we pay more than other companies. Okay. And the reality is this, if that is what you lead by, so will your work. So will your attitude. So will your body language. And we can see through that. So I say that if you truly have a hunger to come in and get closer to your goals, show that to us. Be yeah, sincere. We, we had a, that's a great question, by the way. We had an applicant about two weeks ago. She had zero security experience, but what was on her resume, she was a manager at McDonald's for seven years, an overnight manager. So like that really tough night shift in a part of the city that is going to be really tough to be a manager there. That was enough to get her a chance to come for an interview. In the interview, she, she was able to communicate how good she is at de-escalating scenarios, understanding that she serves and she represents this big conglomerate like McDonald's and that reputation, but to also take care of her staff and to not let them get abused because it's a tough job sometimes. She understood team and systems and the way that they as a team execute to get a job done. That's all stuff that is big for us. Yeah. And then she started to share that she it's her goal to, to go into policing. So now I'm, we don't know right now, but if we looked in our crystal ball, she probably will be a cop down the road. Yeah, 100%. And okay. that's what we call the X factor. And you can that's what I'm talking about. We can see the X factor in people. We, I remember one time we hired a, a person that literally on his resume, he said he was a farmer. And when we looked at that, we're like, <laughs> yeah. farmer? Yeah. Hmm. I want to meet this person. Yeah, he's got maybe maybe he's got a good work ethic. Yeah, maybe maybe he has a good work <laughs> ethic. I mean, come on, farmers are notoriously known for having incredible work ethics. It's part of their lifestyle. Anyways, this guy came in, he blew his interview away, he killed it, and we had him for less than a year and now he's on with Toronto Police, okay? I say that to you guys because again, we look at through the eyes of scouters. We look at through the eyes of how police look at. If we're going to have relationships with police agencies, they're trusting us to be able to find people with that X factor. So in answer to your question, my friend, if you can come in and demonstrate in a great way why we should select you and give you the opportunity, you will get through. We could care less about your schooling. We can care less about how much experience you have working in security, all that. What we're trying to find out is who are you? Who are you? What kind of person are you? Are you a kind person? Are you a good human being? Are you someone that we can pour into? That is where the value comes in. Yeah, I'll uh, speak to that, you know, kind of two things. In our company, we have a mandate. We, we had a pin made. When the pandemic happened and we had to send teams out during the lockdown, and I'm talking about March 2020 when the world shut down, we had a lot of people kind of leave. It was a really scary time. We supplied security to the front lines when no one knew what PPE to, re to rely on, what, you know, what is this enemy that we face? And because, of the, you know, those that did and stepped up to the work, we created a pin for them. And it was a Valor pin. On the pin reads two markings. It says empathetic protectors. And that's kind of in a nutshell what we look for, what we value. People who literally are full of empathy, but at their heart, they are a protector. Um, we've been able to share that with a lot of the cops that we know. And they said, that is the job. If we can find someone who's a really 
great person, a great son, a great spouse, a great big brother to their neighborhood. It doesn't matter if they had security experience or whatever. Like they, they have life experience where they understand they have a role and they can bring influence in that role. And then someone, and then they also say that if someone understands that the job to be a cop is to actually protect, to go in there and when no one else wants to go, they will respond. That's huge. That's where you can show that track record with us, mm. you know, that we are able to say like, yeah, we have managers who can say when this happened, so-and-so stepped right in there, got into this situation and de-escalated this domestic. This gentleman who grabbed a beer glass, was about to throw it, were able to calm him down. I can tell you, we have reports. We had a report three days ago of a gentleman with mental illness who was literally picking up a chair and about to like basically start Royal Rumble in the hospital. The security team said that they, it, in the report says they calmly approached him and said, it, asked him how he's feeling. They gave their name and said, look, I, I'm so-and-so with Sentinel. Can we just have a talk? They were able to de-escalate it. The gentleman returned back to his room and even apologized for causing the disturbance. Okay, That exposure to these environments is where you prove to yourself that you're built for this job and also to your peers, and they will help you. If you fail over and over, it's fine. Okay, But we just want to see that you're committed to the process and that you're going to commit to learn and to get better, hence the humility, and second, the hard work. Nice. Any other questions, guys? Um, I actually have a question. Um, I was wondering about the um, physical requirements. Is it similar to policing um, regarding fitness and glasses, for example? Okay, so for vision, that's something that we're, we don't do, but the police do, obviously. Um, but in regards to your physical elements, we do have a physical component to the organization. And even though it's not linked to the same criteria, for example, the prep test is, um, we do look for effort. So we're going to put you through drills, through running drills, through physical elements of push-ups, of, of like burpees. We want to put you to hit your max so we can then see how you react when we put you in a scenario or something of the sort. And I say that because even though you may not be able to successfully hit a certain mark of push-ups, we're just looking for effort. If you're thinking, I'm not going to do that, then that shows us as well what you're kind of coming into. So there is a physical component in the training, and that's after getting hired. Um, and then in order for anyone to continue their employment with the organization, they have to pass training, right? So they got to get a 70% minimum through our training setup. And I can tell you for the most part, people pass, but we do send people home. If we find that people are not taking this seriously, thanks very much. We're withdrawing your, uh, your, uh, your application contract. We're done. So I say that to you because uh, if you come in with a willingness and a desire to grow, even if your fitness levels may not be where you want them to be, we can help you get there. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, for your jujitsu, is it a belt system or how does that work? Oh, no, no. So we have uh, two people in the organization that are actually from Brazil. They are both working with us in leadership capacities. Um, they basically put a program at our facility just in general for drop-in. So uh, it, it right now is on the most simplest term as an opportunity to learn a skill set and exercise. If you were looking at directly going for belt level accreditation, uh, that would be something you'd have to talk to them directly because they do have a company that uh, that does that. Yeah, and they kind of they work through scenarios because they have that, as I was saying about you know the gentleman with the with the mirror with the shards of glass. They work through scenarios how to take to control of an individual, how to handcuff safely with one, two, three people. What happens if a second or third or uh, attacker comes into a scenario? How to keep space? How to understand uh, to remove an in, you know an improvised weapon down to a sharp or dull weapon? It's like those are things that they can constantly explore. Um, th these things are huge. To say that, that this might serve you in your policing, community, uh, policing career is a huge understatement. This is stuff that if you can learn how to work safe because you have the composure to know how to control someone else without hurting them and without being hurt yourself, it, it's a major asset. Mm. Anybody else? We'll, we'll throw out one more question. Anything else anyone has? Okay, so what I can say then, uh, just to kind of wrap this, Kathy and our end, is that if you do want more information about our, our company and what we do, what we stand for, how we think, sentinelsecurityplus.com. If you look at the chat function of Zoom, you'll see the website addresses there. In addition to that, 
If you're looking at social media handles that you want to check out and see what we are, say, do these guys really walk the walk? Check out Instagram at Sentinel Security. You can see exactly what we do. In addition, if any of the women are listening to this and want to get that exposure in front of a recruiter and you think you have what it takes, or if you want to just use it as a learning piece, we have, I believe, three sets remaining. And uh, all you got to do is uh, take a look at the flyer that I, uh, I, I sent off to uh, Kathy. She can send that off to you guys. You would need to submit that to us by no later than tomorrow because we did close it yesterday. But again, we opened up three seats for something like for specifically for Centennial. So anyways, just wanted to throw that out. I really want to thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Again, guys, nothing more than we have is to ensure that people develop and grow. Take a look at our podcast on at the Sentinel Mindset. It's on Spotify, on iTunes, on YouTube. You will see the people that we're talking to from chiefs of police to recruiters, to lot of protectors. There's a whole lot of cool content there. And again, it's designed to help you develop and grow to be the better versions of yourself. Outside of that, guys, thank you for your time. And, and we'd really like to thank you guys for coming to do this presentation. One thing I really, really like about your company is that um, you do encourage your, your people to move on to policing and that it provides, sometimes you guys, um, this provides you with that, that missing piece of what you need to get into uh, law enforcement or policing. And that is to gain that experience through uh, a security company a really good security company like this one. And uh, not only to gain that that experience for law enforcement, but um, to uh, be able to work out there in the public and uh, and have that, that work experience behind you. So thank you both very much for coming and thank giving you. this presentation. We really, really appreciate it because a lot of the students here do end up uh, going into the security field. I know we have some students in this class who are already in the security field. All right, so um, we really appreciate you uh, coming forward and, and uh, giving the presentation today. Thank yep. you very much, guys. And look out, because you guys are part of this podcast, look out for the future episodes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Okay, All right, everybody. Again. Have a good one. All right. Take care. Bye now. All right, guys. Stay safe, Bye. guys. This podcast is brought to you by Executive Protection Lifestyle Canada. Make sure to drop by next week and don't forget to subscribe.